podcast, but I have such a, you know, great outro. Talking about the outro and the intro. Hey, man. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode or edition of Hey, Man. Uh, my name is Jacob Wolf, and this is the old man, Josh Wolf. Um, coming to yeah, you, you know, this is the first time I've ever almost started over because we just rambled what? in. We just, but then who cares? But when, yeah, half of our podcasts don't have any some sort of. Half of our podcasts are rambles, just really long ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do a lot of rambling. And That's when I I'm say saying, we. Like, you. Yeah, I do a lot of rambling. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. That's the most music I can do without them taking it down. I don't even know what that is. That was actually. That's the Allman Brothers. Oh, I, I, can't don't, run. Don't I can't do anymore. Um, All right. Do you don't know any Allman Brothers? I mean, I bet you if you played their greatest hits, maybe. But Yeah, I bet you you might know one or two that I played. Yeah, I can't name any off the top of my head. But, you know, just like I bet you they have more hits than the Eagles, though. I'll tell you that. They do not have more hits than the Eagles. I mean, Can the, Eagles you, listen. Three good, the Eagles only have three good songs. So J- you know. Okay, so I want to tell everybody what this is a reference to. And by the way, man, I saw you post that on your stories today. You don't think I could beat that little goat? Hey, the little one, the one who looked really angry? Not, not a chance. Not a chance. You don't think I could beat up that little goat? Yeah, no, Jacob doesn't think I can beat up do, goats. Do, do you want to know why? Okay, first of all, that was. By the way, you see the size of those horns? That hey, dude, a, I'm not gonna it, let him hit me with the horns. That was a thin horn sheep. I was talking about whole, big horn sheep who have bigger horns when we were in Taronga. Yeah, but but Doranga. Yo, but dude, but guess what? I'm not gonna let them hit me with the horns. How do you dodge it, dude? When hit their head, it's the five D's. No, no, because if you because they 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 ram, so you can't duck because you're gonna get rammed. You can't really dodge. You can't hold on. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. You can't dip. You can't duck. You can't dodge, and you can't dive. And then you can't dodge a second time. Like but I can none of those jump like, over them. I can that's jump not a over D. them. I don't know if you know that jump starts with a J. Not in some languages. It's jump like Django. That is false. <laughs> All of that is false. But yo, that little one, this is why I would say you can't. I'm going to start naming them. I'm going to start spelling our names with DJ, Josh, and Jacob. I hope not. I sure as hell hope not. You don't think I can beat the little one? No, because here's the thing. This is what I'm going to explain. Whenever you see a baby animal in the wild, what's usually really close to it? Yeah, but the mama. That's not what I. Yeah, the mama. Great. How territorial are mother animals? This Extremely. isn't the question. The question is me versus that little goat. Can I beat it? That's not if not just, if the mom's if around. The goat, it's just a little goat. I give you a little more of an advantage. But if it is any of the other goats that were in that taxidermy little spot and they have the horns they did, you're fucked. Dude, dude I'll just, I, it'll come, you're it'll fucked. dip its head. When it's dip its head, I'll s- step to the side and I'll get on back of it. I'll just ride those horns. But that's what I'm trying to say is when you step to the side, you see the horns, they bulk out of their head. So when the head, you have to still dude, dodge I'm quick the like horns. A cat. I'm quick I like disagree. a cat. I'm I quick like a I cat. Think, I think you make try to make one quick move and you blow out your entire knee. Well, maybe. Yes. Well, maybe. But yes. But I do think that I could beat one of those little you so we were talking about the big horn sheep. The big horn sheep? You yeah. thought the big horn sheep can beat me up? I, I no, at, by the way, no, 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 no. Not thought. No, that the big horn sheep could beat you up. Yeah, they ram I, with 700 pounds of pressure. It only takes 500 pounds of pressure to crack a human skull. I'm not going to let it hit me. How do you know? Here's my thing. If you blow out your if you blow out your knee trying to dodge it once and then you're on the floor, then there's no way you're getting away from it. Duck, dodge, dive, dip, and dodge. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Did you hear that they might do a fucking another dodgeball? I would be so excited. You know what I hope they do, though? If they do it, Vince Vaughn has to become the old coach in the wheelchair. That's a good idea. Like. They have to do it that way to where it's like he rolls up and it's him coaching the dodgeball team. But it's hard. Like it's hard to make a second. If you were going to make a second movie, it's hard not to have Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn in it as their characters because they're 
perfect. Well, they have to. Like, have to. Have right. To. So it, I think it would be more like, like them trying to go around two. But uh, here's the thing. If Vince Vaughn then is no longer the underdog and he is the guy who owns the gyms and has all the money, then, then you would turn Ben Stiller into the underdog and you can't do that. No, Ben Stiller is still going to be the asshole. Right. He's still obviously the antagonist. Yeah, and, and so it'll be somehow Vince Vaughn will be losing his money or lose something and I'll have to do it again. I will tell you, though, now that we're talking about this movie, I miss movies. I miss this generation of mo- – like, yo, there was – it seemed like there was a good comedy in the theaters every other week. And yeah, just, there isn't anymore. There just isn't, right? There Especially, hasn't been since like, like late 2010s. Like there hasn't really been any – like not even late, but like 2015, 2016 when we did our movie things. 2015, there were a couple of good ones in there. But everything else after is just – I really know. feel like comedies in particular – have disappeared. Yeah. I also just feel like everybody thinks they're a comedian. So do you know what I'm saying? So everybody thinks they can write a good comedy. Yeah. But like even, even guys shooting. like Seth Rogen, there just isn't that. So like to me, like it was Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn and that crew and Sandler for a little while. Meryl. And then it went to like Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill and Jason Siegel, you know, with, uh, a little This is the End sprinkled in with Franco was in a bunch of those movies. Super bad. Um, yeah, yeah. Matt, Sarah, all those dudes. Yeah. And then who, nobody picked it up. Like nobody – there was there hasn't been a crew that's come through because the, it feels like the creative crews aren't making movies. They're on TikTok and Instagram like Batch. Yeah. Like I, he would be a dude – Batch Trevor has a crazy resume. Crazy. But but Batch or like um, Trevor Wallace, these dudes to me who would have been like the next generation in the old days who would have picked up movies, they don't have to. They're, they just they're – make, They're making more money on the internet. Like here's the thing. They're on the internet every day. They If you're – like most of those big people, even like you know Charlie D'Amelio and Noah Beck and all those like – just influencers, like they're not even like real comics. I don't know who TikTok. either one of those people are. They're pretty much two of the founding fathers of this TikTok shit. Like, you never heard of the D'Amelio family? Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio? No. They're pretty much two of the biggest names in this entire world right now. Like, granted, if there was a 14 year old out there right now and it was either a picture with Angelina Jolie or a D'Amelio, they're picking the D'Amelio. Like, Angelina Jolie is out of the picture. What do you mean? Like, you meaning like knowing like, who like they I'm were? saying, like, why like, does no, no. Hand- by the way, my hand no. looks huge. Yeah, you're just thinking about it because your hands aren't actually that big in person. So No, they're not. That's why they look huge. <sighs> oh, wait, I forgot to tell you at the beginning. It's your job to think of things that we want to eclipse from the show. So we can't edit that out either. So, All right, let me get my notes open then since I'm the one who's doing the work. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you doing too much work? Oh, I'm sorry. Could you have just told me before so I didn't miss nine minutes of possible clips? Well, I think this for we'll get some. All right, go ahead. Um, but no, what but the Emilios like, are just in the TikTokers. So the daughters, well, there's two daughters, Dixie and Charlie. Both of them are influencers. They've made so much money and are so famous that their family has a TV show. Okay. Like, and so the mom and the dad have kind of like become their own TikTok personalities on the internet. Um, and it's and it's that's who they are. But what I'm saying is it's not that Angelina Jolie isn't as well known as Charlie or Dixie. But if a teenager was out on the streets right now and it was either a choice between a picture with Angelina Jolie or a D'Amelio, they're picking the D'Amelio because to them, Angelina Jolie isn't as relevant as those two. Well, she but probably to those, isn't, to be fair. Angelina Jolie, for me, is more relevant than any TikToker because she's Angelina goaded. Jolie? Yeah, she's goaded. Like, but here's the thing. Those kids post just not even a brand deal, just a TikTok of them dancing or them with their friends. As long as it gets over a million views, they get paid a whole bunch of fucking money. I'm assuming so most of their doing, what they're doing in 30 days, like Trevor Wallace as well. Like if he does 30 days of just TikToks or he takes two months on a movie, he's making more money on TikTok online than he would be in that film. Well, not just that, but like at this point, it's 
it's better for your career to do the TikTok every day. Yeah, it just you're just you're just you're making yourself seen every single day on you're the so also you're, speaking directly to your fans like right. so say my mom was like yeah i might go see this movie and trevor wallace was in it it wouldn't benefit him at all but the direct his direct fans right. seeing him every day that benefits him a lot right wow i mean it's so crazy like there's no i'm trying to think the last good comedy i've seen in a theater i don't know the last good new comedy i've seen um, I, have to, I have to look at dates of movies and when they came out and did you watch the jonah hill one with eddie murphy no i watched a little bit of it i watched it the first 30 minutes of it and then stopped watching it. look i think it's funny it's not i don't like not, that eddie murphy character i think i think it was different for him i thought it was great he played but, it really well from what yeah. i saw but i don't like that as his character yeah, the, to me, when I think of Eddie Murphy, it's the exact opposite of the character that he plays. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. I think he does. That's what he's usually always done. But right. like he, this movie to me was not super bad funny. It wasn't 21 Jump Street funny. It was more grown up. This is hat crooked. It was more grown up Jonah Hill. Right. And look, don't get me wrong. People have to evolve as actors. And I totally get that. And Jonah Hill wanted to do something different because that's the first time I've seen Jonah Hill in a film where he's like, way more serious than he ever has been, but still has that hilarious dry humor that he just throws into random, uh, like you know, random one liners. But, but well, he's done funny movies. I mean, he's done serious movies before, but he was the romantic lead in this one. Yeah. I actually think he was, I think he was really good. I think Me the too. dude's got a lot of shit over the last couple of years because, you know, uh, for some reason he doesn't get hate for his acting, but he gets hate for his weight. And like the fact that he goes up and down between, how you know what his weight is and i think can i tell you something we're focused on that more than they're focusing on the fact that he's talented i felt really bad for that dude on he and um channing tatum were on chelsea lately and um i remember him being really nervous before the show that she was going to make fun of him but not like in the way that other people were nervous, like sincerely, like kind of in an insecure way. And I was like, oh, this dude is, you know, he's in, like like most normal people, insecure about right. things about themselves. But I was like, yeah, this, I, I felt bad for him. I really did. Yeah. He was like, he was like really, really, um, because look, man, and by the way, this is not bad mouthing her. That was who she was. She would go in on you about things. She's intimidating. Like, oh, yeah, I've heard people say that before, man. I don't, well, it's different for you. You've known her for ever, but yeah. for people, even in that industry, knowing what her track record is and knowing who she is and what kind of TV show she has and how funny she is, but also how like in your grill she is, it's intimidating. And I totally understand, bro. Well, can we, let me just, let me just describe who Chelsea is everybody in a real quick, just memory of mine. It's one of my favorite memories. We were in Austin, Texas and I was in eighth grade. Or Dallas, oh, yeah. sorry. We were Dallas, Texas when I was in eighth grade. And we were staying, and he was on tour with her. And it was me, him, Chelsea, Brad Wallach, Heather McDonald, and uh, Chelsea's friend. And we were staying at Chelsea's friend's house. We got up in the morning. We're getting ready to go. And I'm still kind of like waking up. And Chelsea is in the kitchen walking out the door. And we go, hey, good morning, Chelsea. And she looks at me. And with the piece of celery she just took a bite of in her hand, she slaps me with the celery. <laughs> in the face. She goes, she goes, and I'm like, good morning, Chelsea. She goes, Kish, morning, and then just walks out the front door. What? I never seen something like that. And I was like, <laughs> right then. And then we got in the car, and no one ever spoke about it. Like, and no one no. ever said a damn thing about it. But it was Let just me tell so you. funny to me. Like, for me, like, and I, that's what I'm saying. I understand. And I was supposed to be a person she liked. She just walked past me with a good morning slap. She me did like food. you. Well, that's what By I'm the saying, way, though. It's like for Jonah hey, Hill, I understand it. They don't have a rapport. Right, we right, right. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. Rapport, and I got slapped with food. I will tell you one of the things that I enjoyed the most about her is that she did do that to you because she liked you. And right. she, she wasn't doing things like that to people she didn't like. Right. And, and she, I remember you she, telling me that. Yeah. If she was fucking with you, she liked you. And I'll tell you something, man. You know, I know a lot of people have had some bad things to say about her. I am not one of them. Yeah. I'm not one of them, man. She was always super good to me, super good to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
agree. Um, dude, Wait, real quick question again. I'm sorry to backtrack. What does the time say in your top left corner, just so I know if we're there or not? 13.22. Does it actually? Yeah, what does yours say? 15.10. That's what mine says, too. Why do you keep doing that? <laughs> God damn it. Do you look up at it and then try and do a minute and a half like deduction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, you found your passport? I was just thinking about that. I did find my passport. So for in those of you who spot, didn't know, in the Jacob didn't come to Canada it. with Jacob didn't come to Canada with me a couple of weeks ago because he couldn't find his passport. And so he looked and he looked and he looked. And now, ta da! Where was it? In my room. On but like the, on on the bedside table, just under some things. And it was crazy because like there was something on the desk because I was the only reason I found it is because I've been packing for my move. Well, and so well, I'm in there. Which, well, just, hold on, hold on. Hold on let, me, let me let me just let me just go. Let me just go. Hold on. And I'm sitting in there, and there are two bedside tables in our back room, and one that's closer to the bathroom. So I, I'm sitting on that and I'm clearing stuff off of it. And I pick up these three, I don't know why they were there, but there were three rectangular, like plastic, not covers, but like bags. On top of it, I pick all three of them up and I pick something else up in it when I pick those up. And I was like, what is that? And so I drop them all again and I see an Australia boarding pass. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. No way. And I go and I look at it and I pick it up. A, pull that so, a little bit away. From, away. away. There you go. Yep, yep. And I pick it up and I pull it and I look at it and, I, and I'm staring at my passport. And you know what's crazy is I had my buddy McKay, who was driving me to the airport that night, come and tear up the place too. He didn't see it either. Like when I got to that desk, I must have just picked everything up with it and just not even looked in my hand to see that the passport was on the bottom. It was a bed. It's a little table. When you say bunch of things on the table, I'm still not getting a picture in my head what it was that was on top of the passport. It's, it's hard. See. Yeah. It's hard to explain. But also, my passport, you were right. Passport was flipped upside down, which is fine. I should still be able to see that navy blue. Blends in, though. Especially when the side table is black. That's what I'm saying. Blends in. When I, when I, I said, moved all that stuff around, which was so crazy. Like, I had gone to that table. And I remember McKay coming over the other day, and I was like, yo, why don't you go ahead and look on that table over there? And he goes, what? And I go, look on that table. And he moves a couple things around. And he goes, get the fuck out of here. And I was like, dude, I don't even know how that's possible. Like, yeah, dude. I, I, honestly, it's exactly what I figured that it was under something upside down and you lifted it up real quick and it kind of blended in. But when I, I remember when clear, I texted you, when I, text, when I texted you and I was like, hey, dude, I bet you it's upside down. You were like, what the fuck does that mean? No, I, I know what upside down means, ass. No, I know, but like <laughs> upside down, meaning why would that matter? And well, I was like, yeah, I was thinking because- about it. Was, yeah, I've seen things that have been upside down before. My passport's been upside down. I can still pick out my passport when it's upside down. I when I've missed over my passport because it blended in. Now, by the way, dude, your mom. Should we tell grandma and grandpa that I found my passport, or should we still tell them that I haven't reported it yet because I think I'll go to jail? So, for context, it's been about two weeks since I couldn't find my passport. Yeah, and my. I my can't believe you didn't bring that up at the at Adam's birthday. Yo, that is- Iman, Iman and I were talking about it, and I was we were. She was like, "Did they bring it up?" And I was like, "Yo, they didn't bring it up." Oh my god! Well, because dude, I didn't think I'd have to bring it up. I for sure thought when I first saw Grandma and Grandpa, they were <sighs> going to be too. like, "Did you report your passport?" And I was going to be like, "Nope." So and just have a go. Do you want to tell the story about them, or do you want me to? I'll tell it. So. Okay. My dad has like called his parents, my grandparents, and they're obviously on the phone and whatnot because – and everybody online had known that I couldn't find my passport because we had talked about it in podcasts or posted clips and stuff like that. And so for about 10 or 20 minutes of their 30-minute phone call, my grandparents kept telling my dad, hey, man, he should he should report his passport. And he was like, he'll, he'll be fine. Like It's not that big of a deal. He said that he's going to find it probably when he cleans everything up and moves out. And then my grandfather, just from the background, all you hear was somebody could commit a crime in his name. 
And it's just like, just like out of the background. Like I love how he just comes from left field. And then my grandmother would repeat it and go, did you hear what your dad said? Somebody could commit a crime in his name. And he goes, he goes, no, no, I, I heard what he said. I, like he'll report it if he needs to. I totally get it. And then another two minutes later, all you hear from the background is he could go to jail. And my grandmother looks at my dad and goes, did you hear that, Josh? He could go to jail. And my dad was like, he's not going to jail. Dude, what is happening? My dad was so convinced that someone was going to find your passport and commit a crime in your name. Was, and I was going to go to prison. It's so funny. <laughs> I just can't. I, I, get it. I could not wait to tell you about that, man. <laughs> it is. It is so funny to me. Like they're so, oh, dude. They're it so funny. was next level humor for me, man. Because I was just like, it. I didn't know what to say, and he's like, you know, it's really scary from the background. It's pretty. Could commit. It could go to jail. It's a felony. It's pretty. I'm funny. gonna tell him you still haven't found it. Okay, I'm down. Here's the thing: if you do do that, I said, do you do what when you do that. Please use mom's phone to record the phone conversation because I would like to hear the conversation. That would be. So fun. Yeah, maybe I'll do that for you. But also, like, maybe he hinted there and be like, yeah, somebody said Jacob got a weird call the other day. But it's credit. Yeah, yeah. Just just throw something in there and see what happens. Are we gonna play a joke on grandma and grandpa? Probably not the greatest idea. They're old. I don't need I don't need anybody having heart problems because I just was joking around that someone committed fraud in my name. Yeah, thinking man. about it, thinking about it, not a great idea, like out loud, but on paper, super funny. I'm with you on that. I think they're past the age of us pulling jokes on them. Yeah, grandma's for sure not about our shit. I'll tell you that. No, that is not uh, a good move on grandma. Grandpa, however, would probably laugh after he was like, I told you so. I, 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 I I'm thinking about it. I think maybe we leave them off the prank list. I, I would, I would agree. But I want you to know that I'm going to start fucking with you on the road. Since you've been okay. scaring me. Yeah. Yo, hold on. So I went to go, I want to tell everybody, I went to go post a video the other day of me scaring my dad when we were in Baltimore. <sighs> not only is it not in my camera roll, but I thought about it and I was like, yo, I, I might have just been too high to where I didn't hit the record button. And I was just standing behind the door with a phone acting like I was recording. I love but that you know idea. What, you know what video I did find? Huh? When we were in Texas this past weekend. My dad, okay. my dad did. For those of you who don't know, he took a little bit of break from psychedelics for a little while, and weed. But when we, and weed. But when we were in Austin, he was like, "I'm going to take a mushroom." I went. He, we were taking photos on stage after the show, and I went to the back and I went, "Trevor, my brother." I said, "Yo, call him off to the side of the stage. He's super high right now. I am going to scare the shit out of him in front of everybody in line who wants a photo." And he was like, "Great." He went out there. I hit record. I run out there and I get behind him and I literally I touch him and I'm like ha ah! and he just he just gets up and turns around and he looks at me and he goes oh hey and I was like what like I have video evidence of the only time ever where Josh Wolf didn't go ha ah! when what he was got my scared. explanation what was my explanation he 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 looked up at me and he goes dude I'm so centered right now and then yeah. I. Just <laughs> <took the video. laughs> I was so shrewd was, now. You couldn't was scare so me. Bad. I was no, so I was mad. one with everything, man. By so the bad. way, that was me, you, and Trevor on stage together was one of my funnest. That was so much fun, that little jaunt. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it was a good time. I'm still not, I'm still so mad the fact that I didn't scare you right there. So are you going to. It kept me up at night in Austin. I'm not going to lie. Are you going to start scaring me on the road a little more? Yeah, I think I'm going to try and do it in the morning or like at night because when you go to bed before me, maybe I'll just – I'll like turn the TV up really loud but turn it off. And then right when I turn it back on, it will just be something really loud. Or I might start bringing a speaker on the road and like Dude, playing, some, I, playing some really annoying shit or really cool. scary shit when I'm not in the room. Cool. Just so you know, I'm going to start pranking you. Okay. That, like, uh, that just means I have to step my game up. Cause it's on just... like Donkey Kong, man. Yeah. And I'm we live gonna, together. We, for those of you who don't know, we, 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 we have, we're in the same hotel room. True. So like it, listen, or what are the rules? First of all, let's set some ground rules. First of Can all, we, no physical. We, hold, hold on a second. Let me ask a couple questions. Okay. Can we fuck with each other when we're sleeping? Yes or no? 
Do you know how much I like my sleep? Yeah. Okay. We'll have, to, we'll have to discuss on how you would fuck with someone during their sleep. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because like, yep. like I don't, I don't want shit thrown on me while I'm sleeping, or like not shit, actual shit, but like you know what I mean, like just like yeah. random stuff, or like if it's six a.m., you already wake me up when you leave the hotel room at five a.m., old man, because yeah. you slam yeah. the door on purpose. I, so. Yeah, not on purpose, but not not on purpose. It's definitely on purpose. Well, it's not not on purpose because all hotel doors just swing shut. I just That's thought of right. something really. I just thought of something really funny in my head that I'm gonna start doing to you. <laughs> I just thought of something so funny. Oh my god! Okay, this is gonna be fun, but we gotta start filming it. We'll start filming it for everybody. Yep, I'm gonna start By calling hotels in advance ahead just to start planning shit in the room. I posted that video of I told you about Beth and uh, Beth, Kate and I doing makeup, right? I didn't see the video, but I know of the. It's so good, dude. Oh, I have a question for you. And then I have a comment. Let me do the comment first. Okay. First of all, oh, have we set the ground rules for the pranks? You you asked one question and then your ADHD brain was like, oh, what's over there? Okay. No, we so, didn't finish. You asked one question about sleep, fucking with me in my sleep. And then you were okay. like, whoo. No, no, so no sleep fucking. But I whoa, can whoa, do whoa, things. Whoa, I can- whoa, 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 whoa. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Pause. I'm out. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. No, I can't fuck with you when you're sleeping. But okay, let me make this distinction. Yeah, no waking. I need you to make distinctions better. Thank you. No waking the other person up, but I can do things around you in your bed when you're sleeping that that will bother you when you wake up. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you put things, but like, hold on. But no ruining things? the mattress, no fucking up someone's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, like for me, I would just say like, if you're going to put something next to me that I'm going to roll into and wake up with like food on me, just make it like like whipped cream or something. Don't make it like wings or a chocolate cake yeah. or like. Amateur hour. But do you know what? I, amateur hour for family tussle. You were like, I love a pie in the face and just started pieing people in the face. What are you talking yeah, about? That's completely different. I'm not going to just. Well, maybe I'd have you roll over into whipped cream, but nah, I already have some ideas. You see okay. me down with my pecs? Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm writing the notes because somebody has to do it because you're not. What are the other rules? I would like as little physical shit as possible. Like I think that- Explain physical. Like, like somebody grabbing you or getting hurt? Yeah. like I feel like this should just be a mental warfare. Yeah, I agree. I okay, agree. Cool. Cool. I'm not going to jackass you, although I'd love to get that big giant hand to just go. Ugh. Oh, the high five is one of my favorite jackass Dude. kids ever. I thought that one, that one in the fucking fist. Yeah. I like the, the one reading where, on the door. I like the one where they put Steve-O in a porta potty and they just fling him into the air oh on a slingshot. God. That's, That's so just weird. crazy. Yeah. Okay. So no, no physical, no waking somebody up. Yeah. What about pranks on stage? I don't even know how you would do that. I mean, I, I know you'd find a way, but I don't even know how I'd do that. I'm asking. I'm just asking for parameters. I guess it depends on the prank. Okay. Like there's going to be so many, like we already have so many people come to our shows. I don't want it to be something that then it's like, like I, I want people to, if it's going to be on stage, that's fine. People can come up and say, oh, that's a good prank. But I don't want it to come down to where people, people are already calling me dumb and that's, you know, whatever. But I don't want people to be like, oh, you're so dumb for falling for that. Like, that's just the one thing I want to avoid because it's, yeah. I don't well, I don't want people calling you dumb. Too late. You're the one who calls me the dumb one. Thank you for playing. Yeah. But like the dumb, I, I make it clear that you're not dumb. But you're just out of the, the three. One. Yeah. But that's still calling me the dumb one. Which is fine, by the way, because I accept that. But and yeah, but also, I don't want way, nowadays. I, think I don't know if I'm the dumb one anymore. <laughs> so listen, I'll leave I want to make it super clear, though, dude. You are not and have never been dumb. I'm not a very book smart guy, but that doesn't mean I'm dumb. I just that's don't got like nothing to, study. to do with smart and dumb. I'd also rather be high than study, which is what I did for most of high school. So yeah, but like well-read and intelligent are two different things. True. 
and there are different kinds of smart. Yeah. And I never want you to think that you're not smart, dude. Like you, I, I will say this. I know out of all the things about yourself, it's probably the thing that you have the least amount of confidence in. But I would tell you that is like what comes first, you know? Mm -hmm. I think whatever you have confidence in yourself in, you'll be able to do. Right. And the more like, like when we were doing, we were writing that song on the plane. I was like, oh, this dude's writing straight up jokes, punchlines. Like, and it takes smarts to write jokes and punchlines. You're so you are a smart dude, man. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I just don't want like, you know, it's yeah. important to me. Like it's important to me that you understand the difference between the jokes that I tell and the character you have to play. It's, it's heightened. Well, rea- it's, 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 it's heightened reality. It's height. My jokes. A lot of my jokes are heightened reality. Right. Right. I you're saying, okay, okay. I'm more talking about the people who are watching. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Because I just want, I get it. I get I that. The difference. I just want, I just want to be clear. Yeah. I hope they hope you know the, how I feel. And then we can't really help the rest of them. Hey man, it, all I, it makes me feel better knowing you're the dumb one of your siblings too. So it's all good. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't think two, I'm dumb. Two, two peas in a pod. That's right. Um, okay. Here's my question for you. Are we done with the prank part? I think those are three pretty good rules. Public okay? Also just depends on what it is. Like, yes, public pranks are okay. It's just, again, it's like there has to be a line. Listen, I am taking suggestions. If anybody listening wants to reach out to me on my socials. Now, are you pranking? His socials are, his socials are Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram and it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Are you taking, are you scaring and pranking? Or is scaring in on pranking? Scaring is pranking. It's okay, just going to be a lot of scaring. Okay, I'm with you. Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. So your mom was up here earlier, and there was something on the ground. And she was like, what is that? I was like, oh, it looks like a it looks like a macadamia nut, like half of it. I go, pick it up. I'll eat it. And she scooched it over with her foot. And I was like, well, I'm not going to eat it now. And she goes, you would have eaten it off the floor, but you won't eat it if my foot touched it. And you know what it is for me? Look, I'm sure there's in my there's nothing happening in my office where anybody. Yeah, but have you ever fact that it's the fact that I saw the foot touch it. Right. If I don't see anything happen to it in my brain, I can just be like that. That's clean and put it in my mouth. But, be, but because said, the right. foot touched it, I couldn't do it. Where do you fall on that? I'm so curious. Uh, honestly, first of all, I live by the five second rule. So if the macadamia nut had been on the ground for five seconds, then I'm eating it. But to just come across it randomly and go, yeah, I'll eat that. No, sir. No, sir. That should have been the, that's my first red flag right now. The fact that you were just like, looks like a macadamia nut. I'll take it. And you have no idea how long it's been on the fucking floor is red flag that's- number one. That's a time red, red flag number two, mom, you're not excluded from this, is mom touching it with her foot and thinking that you will eat it. Like, like that, no, because even if it was like, like, I like how so I'm trying to think of something I like. Oh, like if a chicken nugget fell on the floor. And I was like, yeah. hey, will you pass that to me? And her with her sock on, just pass it to me. I'd be like, yeah, I'm not eating that anymore. Yeah, her sock was on. No, but still, that's what I'm saying. Like, even with the sock on, she's probably worn shoes at some point today and the same socks. So her yeah. socks are probably sweaty. So even with a barefoot, like any of those things, don't touch. Like, if I'm like, hey, pass that to me, and you pass it to me with your foot, I'm not eating it. Yeah, man. You, you know, not even had the idea to eat it in the first place because you have no idea how long it's fucking been there. Yeah, but it's been my floor, my office. Have you ever what? swept your floor? That's a no. Uh, Thank you. Exactly. No, but what's happening in here? Are you wearing shoes currently? No, but I usually do. Perfect. That's what happens. You track outside dirt Dude. up into your office. Who knows what's on that floor right now? I mean, you're not making me feel great about it. All I'm saying is you just got to think ahead. Dude, 
Do you remember watching grandpa eat that hot dog off the ground at Fenway park? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do yeah. you remember that shit? And we were like, yeah. and I go, oh, what are you, what are you doing? doing? He dropped it and he picked it right up and he started to eat it. I go, what are you doing? He goes, that's my, he goes, it's my, my hot dog. dog. I was like, not anymore, dude. Now it belongs to Fenway park. I go, this, this, Park has been Ball here since 1912. Yeah. I think not whatever. It, like these that. grounds aren't washed. Are you fucking kidding? He was like, what's the worst thing that could happen? I'm like, well, we're about to find out, aren't we? We will find out. This is also though the same guy who went into Yankee Stadium with a Red Sox hat on. They were handing out Yankee hats at the entrance, and he took the Yankee hat and put it in the first trash can that he saw. And yeah. then y'all sat at the dugout on Yankees dugout at Yankee Stadium, and he put his feet on the dugout. He gives zero fucks. Dude, did I ever tell you the story? Like zero. When we were, when we were kids. Is it the possum story? Yeah, I told you that story. I love the possum story. Yo, when we were the possum store. Yeah. It's so fucking, it's so good. When we were kids, we, so I had dropped a keg in the dining room and there was a hole in the floor and big hole. Uh, big hole. You know, it's funny. I've told you this story too, right? Mm-hmm. Where I, I made a hole in the floor and you know, their 16 year olds are dumb. I was like, I'm just going to move the whole dining room table rug and all over six inches who will ever know like nobody knows where these it's just six inches it's the first thing my mom you know who knows adults Mm -hmm. it's the first thing my mom said when she walked in she was like why is the table there i'm like i don't know what do you mean she was like it's all the way over there i'm like what do you mean all the way she was like why is it so when they moved it there was a hole so they were like there's a hole we're gonna have to redo this floor yeah so, um, you know, po- animals can get underneath the house. And one day a possum came up and was in the house in that little area where they were redoing the floor. Right. And there were some, the, the, it wasn't like the outer part of it. They had kept intact. It was the middle they were doing over. And I saw it and jazz handed and ran into the other part of the house. That was right. Cool. It was a plastic wall. Mm -hmm. He had to, right? So he just ran through this plastic sheet. My brother, same thing. My dad comes home. We hear him hang up his jacket, walk through the place where the possum is, walk through the kitchen, grab a beer, sit down. And we were sitting in the living room and he sat down. And I was like, Did you not see the possum? He was like, What possum? I got the possum in the where the dining room is. And he's like, No, I didn't see it. I go, There's a possum in there. And I was like, what are we going to do? He's like, hold on. And he walked in. When you walked through our dining room, you could walk straight into our garage. In our garage, we had shovels, you know, because it snowed. And he walks in, He's in the possum starts going. <laughs> and my dad just dunk, dunk. hits it on the head. It fucking gets all wobbly. He scoops it up. He opens the door. He just shovels it out. He fucking hangs the shovel up, shuts the door, goes back in, starts drinking beer. He was like, well, I don't, I don't know what you guys were afraid of. I'm like, I yeah. guess I don't either. Dude, this yeah. is the same guy who caught a skunk in the trap in the backyard. Yeah, that's – he's also just a dude as the old – like he. I can assume that young Tom Wolf didn't give any fucks, but the older Tom Wolf gets, it's like he's giving negative fucks. Like I don't understand it. Dude. Tom Wolf used to be able to dunk basketball off of two feet. Yeah, aren't you jealous? Yeah, dude. He's 5'11". He's like 5'9 right now. He is now. He's shrinking a little bit. And so are you. What? Dude, at Adam's birthday, I was so much taller than you for some reason. Yeah, I'm not sh- – don't say that. I'm not shrinking right now. Am I shrinking? Look how tall I am. You're in your shrinking era. Once you hit 50, you start to lose height. Get the fuck out of here with that. What do you mean once you're 50? I'm going to have to Google that. 50, a, you start getting a, shorter? It's a statistic. Yeah, it's a statistic. What statistic? Once you, once once adults turn 50, about 40% of them start to lose their height faster than others. Dude, you are making shit up right now. That is so, – as soon as you yeah, said 40%, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. 
Don't lie to me. You took a you took a beat going, holy shit, is he serious? And yeah, then you until you started it. going 40%. I'm like, this seems yeah. first of all, that number is too perfect. If you had said like 32%. Oh, oh you wanted you wanted you wanted a, a weird number? Yeah, it ended on a zero. Any number ends on a zero. I'm like, come on. It could have really? been rounded. Well, yeah. Could be thirty two percent rounded to forty. If we Google right now, what age do people start shrinking? I'm still guessing fifty. Okay, we'll find out right now. By the way, when we have the podcast studio, we're gonna um, have a computer next to us so we can look up. That's right. Facts or videos or whatever. Should I just ask Siri? No, Siri's stupid. You think so? Yeah. She's only gonna. Here's the thing. She's only gonna bring you to the what to the internet with articles. Like she's not gonna give you an exact answer. Is that noise because of my phone? What noise? That one. What noise? You don't hear that noise. What noise? In fact, we begin shrinking as early as thirty. But men well, that's, can even, that's even worse for you. Men can gradually lose an inch between the ages of 30 and 70. So I was right in the middle of 30 and 70. I wasn't Dude, I, wrong. But I am not shrinking. I'm grow. I don't think I'm getting taller. Don't you think? Well, you, you think you're a growing boy. No, sir. <laughs> no, you are not. Yo, dude. No straight, for you. Straight up. I, I did the most on a... You know the the um, trap bar, trap squats. That oh, bar like you stand in the middle. Hexagonal one. Yeah, I'm sorry, my my. I, I did the most I've ever done on my last set of the workout day. So it wasn't like I went in not tired. It was the That's last thing I last thing I did. I did the bar. No. And this is well, a lot for me, guys. By the way, technically, yes, you did actually do the bar. I did. Plus and by the way, guys, this is a lot for me and for like, you know, I'm, I've never really done a bunch of legs. for So for this to be the last set of the entire workout and for me to get, and I maybe I'd never tried anything this heavy before. Right. But for me to get six at 215. It's pretty good. Yo, dude, last set. So I've done all by these the, other. Yeah, I was going to say, by the way, also six at 215 in the middle of your workout is still pretty good. Dude, this is after a bunch of set reps of pistol squats, which are my least favorite things on this planet. Plank? No, pistol squats. Oh, pistol squats, dude. I can't figure out. You see those dudes do them and women, they get, they're holding like a plate. They're they not, go all, but they also like they do no. I you have to do it with a bench because I can't go down all the way. But they are holding like a plate out in front of them and squatting on one foot while keeping your heel down and hitting the bottom and coming back up. Are you fucked, dude? I saw a guy. Okay, he was in the gym. He was doing those pistol squats. I'm like, well, this is a freak. He was doing push ups without his feet on the ground. Oh, he's a calisthenics guy. Yeah, fuck yeah. Get the those fuck? guys are those guys are so incredibly strong. People are like most of the calisthenic guys, not gonna lie, are look just a little bigger than me, but they just have a little more definitive muscle. They've just trained their muscles in such insane ways that they don't look like they're the strongest dudes in the gym, but they practically are because there is no bodybuilder who can do the shit that those calisthenic dudes do. I I like no way. It's it's so impressive. There's like – the crazy ones for me is like you should look at dudes' bar workouts. Like when dudes do like bar workouts and they hang on a pull-up bar and they do that like slow motion pull-up where they look like they're dancing on the bar or they do spins on it or – oh, dude, that – the bar shit is so fucking crazy to me. I would crush you in a pull-up competition. Probably. I have to go seven miles further down than you do. Dude, this is what – pull your mic away a little bit. You know how far I have to go down for a pull-up? Dude, you guys with long arms. By the time I hit the bottom extension, my knees are on the floor. Yeah. By the time you finish, by the time you go down in your extensions there, your head's only an inch below where it was before. That's right. And I go as wide as I can, so I only have to go kick, kick. 
Yeah, I can't. I, but I I can't do the wide shoulder back ones. The ones that I can do the best are the the neutral grip ones. The neutral grip Wait, ones are always. Dude, you're going long ways. Same with bench press. You guys with long arms, you're at such a disadvantage. <sighs> Shut down. I have to travel such a long way. People are like it's a marathon. It's a marathon, not a race. I go. It's a marathon just for me to get the bar down to my chest, dog. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Very difficult. So I usually try. I try to go a little wider on bench, so it's less for me, like going down and up. That's yeah, yeah. that's where I do that. But pull ups, since I can only do like three or four at a time, I just try to go as as long as fall as long as possible. Because once my muscles get used to it, I'll just I'll be fine. Are you going to train once you get here to Vegas? No, training costs a lot of money. No, no train. I mean, like go to the gym. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I, somebody DM me the other day. They were like, if you are a black, like a black diamond member at Planet Fitness, you get training for free. So interesting. I'm going to look into that. Because having oh, yeah. a set time for me to go to the gym where someone is going to coach me will help me a lot. Is your phone on near you? Yeah, why? That's what it is. Can you hit settings? Is it buzzing at all? No. Yeah. I'll turn it on airplane mode for you, though. Yeah, please. My phone hasn't buzzed. Last time my phone buzzed was 12 minutes ago. Yeah, but if it's not on airplane mode, it can get interference on the mic. Got it. Got it. Well, yeah, I have um, to have it near me because somebody's taking notes that's not you. I mean, listen, dude. I can't do everything. Can't have everything. Can't, oh, yeah, it's a song I can't. That's as much as I can do. Who is that? You want to take a guess? Can't have everything. Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Nope. J. Cole. Nope. ASAP Rocky. Nope. Lil Wayne. Nope. Drake. Yeah, there you go. That would have been, honestly, like if for you, I would have been like, he's going to get it on the first try because Drake would be the first one I would guess. Yeah, but I, I, you're Kendrick and J. Cole over Drake. I think, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, I just like, here's the thing for Drake is like, I love I love Drake's music. Like, don't get me wrong, dude puts out hits year after year after year. Drake after or Beyonce? Year. Drake or Beyonce? For hits, Drake. For you, for you, Drake. Don't get me wrong, I like Beyonce. I don't like. like yeah. Here's the thing: I've been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race recently. With uh, <laughs> I know with you have, partner. man. So I'm very invested in this current season. Hashtag Team Mistress Isabel Brooks. Thank you for playing. Um, and we've been going back and like watching other seasons, right? But <laughs> have yeah. you told have you tagged Ross Matthews in any of your RuPaul stuff? You know what's crazy? The other day I was sitting holding Milo and Iman, my girlfriend, is like, yo, sing a song to him. And I'm sitting there like rocking him back and forth. And I start singing a RuPaul song. It's called it's called American. And I was like, I just started singing the chorus to American, and she tagged Ru and Ross in it, but I'm gonna post it. And see if Ross sees it, but yeah, we, dude, we freaking love that show. show. That show is so not look for anybody out there who is like drag, drag, you know, dressing in drag, or I don't know that type of community. It's not really my thing. Totally understand. I was the same way. It is the most entertaining show on television. Yeah, hands. Is down. it really? It is, dude. It is so much fun to watch. Your mom like, and I have never watched an episode, and I don't mean that it bad to anybody and. <sighs> So I guess we have so little time to yeah, watch. Totally. But Are also you like I should watch it. I just like for me, it's so entertaining because like right, like a lot of these a lot of these queens are my girlfriend and I's age. So we also like understand the lingo and shit. You won't understand the lingo. But you'll still think there are some things that are funny. But the lingo is what really gets me. And Rue is just you a know. Riot. It. What your mom and I started watching, which is so good, is a show called City on the Hill. What? And Showtime with Kevin Bacon set in Boston in the 90s. Dude. One degree of bacon. It's so good. And you know what else? We, 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 rah, rah, rah. Let me, yeah, let me. I Joe, Biden, I Joe Biden there for a second. I ran out of batteries. Rah, rah. You know what we, what we rewatched? Don't fuck with Human cats. House. Oh, I have I still haven't seen it. What? I don't want to watch it. I've heard too much what? about it, and I, I don't want to watch it. What? Not for the sake that I don't think it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good, but I, I, I'm good. Dude. Dude. 
I'm good. It's so good. I already don't fuck with cats, so I'm good. Yeah, but it's got nothing to do. Yes, I know. It's because he starts mutilating them. Yes, I'm very well aware. You, got, of you should them. definitely watch that, dude. No? Yeah. Well, see, yeah. you wearing a Chiba Choo shirt? Cheap oh, Cheap Trick. Okay. I just saw the C-H-E, and I was like, is that a Cheap Choo shirt? Can you name one Cheap Trick song? Probably not. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I know a song about Cheap Trick. It's, um... No, Steady As She Goes is not a Cheap Trick song. What's the Cheap Trick song I know? Um, It's the one about the parents having sex, isn't it? Are you talking about Mom is all right? Yeah. We can't do any more than that. But that's Cheap Trick, right? Yeah, I believe so. That we sang that at the 10-year anniversary. No, we didn't. Not you and I we didn't, sang- but I did. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was like, we sang Hard to Handle. I wonder if we should, if we have a video of us singing that. Every time I hear it come on now, I just, I'm just like, like, I just like go real deep voice. Like, like I just start, I sing it like that because it makes me laugh. A little Eddie Vedder. Yeah, or a little Darius Rucker. Oh, A E I O U. That scene from Ted is so fucking funny. So good, dude. Let me ask you a question. When and by the way, um, my residency here in Vegas, after one show, get switched from once a month to four times a month, every Pretty Monday. Good. So if you can think of some fun weird things. I have a song that we've performed once that you crushed. Then let's do that. Let's just find, let's just fine tune it because there we're still trying to figure out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we just yeah. got to fine tune it. Once we can find a consistent way to do it. We're good. Well, let's do it a bunch in Charlotte. By the way, guys, we should mention that Jacob and I are going to be in Charlotte 420, mm-hmm. 421, 422. The 420 show is going to be super stony baloney. I'm going to be super high. Your rules don't apply to that day, just so you know. It's a national holiday. What rules? I will, I, I will not be going to the gym that day. Yeah, you will. will. No, it's 420. Yeah. You fly in gonna, You fly in that day. Great. You fly. I'll be high before I get on the plane, and I'll be high when I get off the plane. And then high when we get to the hotel. Like I don't know. Uh, this This is a national holiday for me, okay? It's, like, right. it's, like, it's like me taking off Sundays if I was a Catholic. This but, is a national holiday for me. I'll still be out. working. I'll still be working. I won't be working out, and I will be high all day. Okay, yeah. we're working out hard Friday and Saturday. Yeah, sure. We're gonna take a Pilates class. How about that? Sure. That's I'm fine. gonna find us a Pilates class. Okay, you said that four weeks ago and didn't find one. So sure. Yeah, but I'll find one in Charlotte. I, I I'll want to tell you guys right now. I will bet so much money he forgets about it tomorrow. I won't forget about it, but I do want to start. I, I do want to starting to find something fun to do every week that we film on the road. So why we don't should you do something like competition wise, like depending on where we are, like we go somewhere and we compete in like whether it's a brain challenge or a physical challenge or, but it has to be a one-on-one. And I love one-on-one. that. Yeah. That's- Can you be in charge of finding that stuff? Sure. Or do you have your schedule now. So wait, okay, hold on. The whole or, about by the way, we can take – if somebody – people have ideas, you can send them into us. True. True Either that. one of our social medias. Um, dude, I'm so proud. So, you know, social media is such a weird thing. We posted – we each posted a clip um, from this podcast mm-hmm. on our TikToks. And I have more than 10 times the people on my TikTok than you have on yours. True. And you – you got almost all my followers saw it. You got over a hundred times the views. You got a yeah. hundred some thousand views. I got a thousand views. I got it's a, so I got weird. 10,000 in like three hours. It's amazing, dude. It's amazing. But, but we, but like, yeah, dude, it's so weird how that algorithm works. Right. But right. I, I'm, I'm so, I was so happy to see that, that, because it's a guessing game, but if if we find some stuff that works over there, we'll just keep throwing these clips up. Yeah. And you have merch coming with you to Charlotte. I do. A very first time merch uh, designed by my super talented girlfriend. Um, she was like, yo, I got a really cool idea. Can I run with it? And I was like, do you think? 
like whatever you want to do. Um, super cool. It will be premiering 420 and Charlotte. So Charlotte, this is the very first run of any t-shirts that I've ever had. That will be me themed. So I can't wait for you guys to see. Let's go. I think it's super cool, man. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. And so tell everybody where they can find you on socials. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Uh, I'm hopefully going to start streaming when I move to Vegas. Uh, I'm going to use that to possibly preoccupy my time while I'm in town to still also kind of like create content, do all that. Um, so youthful wolf on Twitch, um, you know, the opposite of old, which is fuck that way. Damn it. You see how many times I did that wrong? That guy. Fuck. Yeah, this guy. No, this guy. That was. Oh, no, I'm doing the wrong one. This guy. Yeah, see? See, a little harder. I did that five times. The I whole time I thought I was going the right way, just because this yeah. finger is pointing that way. Right, right, right. This way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com yeah. for tour dates. Jacob and I are doing a bunch of little theaters in May. Uh, we'll be <laughs> in Raleigh, North Carolina in May. Tulsa, Arkansas, a bunch of different places around the country. A couple, yeah, a couple one night only. Uh, yeah, shows. Wichita, Kansas, a lot of places. Um, but this upcoming week, um, Chattanooga on Friday. Corey Forrester is my special guest. I don't know if Ooh. there are any. Oh, dude, he's so fucking funny. Okay. Oh my god, my special guest in Chattanooga. Um, I don't know if there are any tickets left for that show. That's Saturday the 15th. Sunday the 16th is my Bonanza Extravaganza in Nashville. Yeah. I am releasing a couple of my guest list tickets for you guys. So there's some more tickets out there. And um, and then uh, Raleigh, the 4, 420, 21st, 22nd. And, and guys, I can't tell you enough how much we love the support about the podcast. But like I said, if you can rate, if you can leave a, a, um, a review – on iTunes and a comment. It means a lot to us. It will shoot us right up the ranks. We can get some more eyeballs on here. We're both trying to um, really blow this up so we can spend a little more time at home with our families. Well, my yep. family, Jacob's girlfriend and dog. That's a family. That's my family. That's your family. Yeah. 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 That's my family. Um, and so, um, yeah, that would be amazing. So, and we're having, dude, I'm having a really good time doing with this, this with you every week. Yeah, we're having a good time. Uh, absolutely. Did I mention that I like how assertive you've become? Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, step out of the shadow. Um, he says in a dimly lit room. Not that dimly lit. Just terrible camera. Yeah, man. Listen, you are a funny, engaging, handsome dude. So we just got to find your lane. Yep. And we will. And I'm, I'm all about it. I know you will. I know you will. Your hair looks good. Your face looks good. Facial hair looks good. How was the Museum of Natural History today? Museum of Natural History was cool. There was a there was like a gem exhibit and my girlfriend and our friend who's staying with us loved the gems. So we went and did that. Um, and it was good. Oh, I saw somebody there that I didn't expect to see there. Um the late Kobe Bryant's wife, Vanessa. Was she um, mobbed by people? No, no, no. She had she had five staff members following her through the entire thing, but no security. It was only staff members. And then we went to this butterfly exhibit where we were like, you know, it's like a Love little butterfly, butterfly greenhouse. Exhibit. Tell everybody what the butterfly exhibit is. So the butterfly, green, uh, butterfly exhibit essentially is like a small little greenhouse that you walk into. And there's just butterflies flying everywhere on the ground, on the petals. And you just get to sit there and interact with them. If they come and land on you, great. But if they don't, you just sit there and kind of just like enjoy it. Did um, any land on you? No. But they, it was colder today in LA, so they weren't really all out moving. They were all kind of just finding their own uh, set of warmth and just kind of chilling out. But um, we were standing in there, and then all five of those people walk in, and then Vanessa Bryant and her kids walk in. Not that her older kids, her youngest. And I was like – yo, who is that? And I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at her and then I'm looking at her kid and I'm like, yo, that looks dead ass like Kobe Bryant. Like her daughter. I was like, yo, that's Kobe's face on that girl. Like for sure. And so then I went to her Instagram and I was looking at some photos and I was like a hundred percent. But 
she has also come out and said, even while Kobe was with us, she was like, don't come talk to me. Like, like leave me alone in public, especially after all this shit. She was like, leave me the fuck alone. I don't blame so, her, dude. I, I don't either. That's why I was like, when I saw her, I was like, cool. That's a cool place. Like cool th- for me to be um, in the presence. Uh, and I'm good with that. That's it. We saw three famous people today. We saw a lot of people today. Saw Vanessa Bryant, uh, a woman named a woman named a YouTuber named Trisha Paytas, who I have nothing good to say about her. Okay, I don't um, know who that is. Based on her content and who she is, so I just I'm gonna okay. keep my mouth shut. Right. Uh, and then there was a woman. We went and got Blaze Pizza, which is like a build your own pizza place here in LA. And there was a woman who was right behind us, and she was ordering right after. And I looked over, and she walked by us. And my heart stopped. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you know me. I don't get starstruck. You want to give me a clue? You're never going to guess. Like, like, literally, I could give you a thousand guesses and you would okay. never come close to it. Yep. There was a show I used to watch called Wizards of Waverly Place on Disney Channel. Yeah. Main person was Selena Gomez. This was like her first big, like, consistent TV show on Disney. It was the mo- her TV mom in that show. And her name is Maria, uh, Maria Canals Bar- uh, Barrera. And I saw her walk in and she walked by me and I like my heart fucking stopped. And I was like, no, no fucking way. And so, but when we walked out, I just walked over and like shook her hand. And I was like, Hey, I just want to come over and say like, you know, really enjoyed watching you. You were kind of like a steeple, uh, in, in my childhood with that, with that TV show. So I just wanted to say thank you. For, thank you for the last staple, 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 staple in our, in our childhood. So I just want to say thank you for all the laughs and you'll have a great day. And she was like, that was so sweet. Like, thank you so much. And I go, of course. And you know me, I'm not a picture guy. Like, I, uh, unless it's like J. Cole or somebody yeah, I need a yeah. photo with, I usually don't ask for photos. Like, even when I saw T.O. eating lunch, I was like, hey, man, I, I just want a handshake. That's it. Like, and he was like, really? And I go, hey, man, you're eating food. I work here. Like, I'm not trying to, not trying to bug you. Just want a handshake from a future Hall of Famer, and I will be on my way. And he almost looked confused when I said that. And I was like, yeah, man, I'll, you don't know who I am. That's fine. But I, I understand it's it's just a respect level kind of thing. And I I don't want to see any, any some sort of disrespect because I've seen him turn people away at the bar. Yeah. And him just be like, no, nah, fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. And I'm like, yeah, cool. This is looking great. Got you. Um, but T.O. was a nice guy when I met him. Did you get a but picture yeah, of him today? No, no, no. We were, we were in a public place. We were in the restaurant. Yeah. And there was people sitting all around. And if you haven't watched the show, like it's a niche reference. Like if you don't – if you didn't watch that show – religiously like i did you're not gonna know who it is dude don't you count yourself as a famous person no i did get recognized at disneyland however again um how's that feel feel good yeah that's cool i got recognized by like a group of like like teenagers and then i went to go get a drink and i saw two people staring at me from across the bar and they were like looking at me while i was looking at them but talking to each other out the side of their mouths like i didn't fucking know they were talking about me so that was funny, uh, fun. but they didn't, they didn't come up and say anything. And then same spot as I was walking out, someone was like, Hey, are you an actor? I go, no, I look like an actor, but I'm more of a stand up comic. And they're like, Oh, okay, cool. And I was like, okay, bye. And I just walked. Listen, out. man. Yeah. You're, you're putting a lot of positive out there. And so it's coming back and I'm proud of you. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell you something else. If you listen to this podcast, you know that after I do the, this is where I'm going to be playing. This is the website. These are the socials. When the show is supposed to be over, there's always at least five minutes after that, isn't there? Yeah, because he's a rambler and his ADHD brain again is like, oh, look, what's over there? That's right. And it's like you with sparkly things. You see something shimmer and you're like, ooh. You know I do. Um, I do too. All right, listen, dude. I love you. All right, love you too. Uh, I just have one quick outro for America. Don't question it. Just end the video after. You want me to have the hover over end recording? Yep. Am I going to know when to hit end? You, when I, I'm going to say three words, and after the third word, you can end it. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, do you want to say anything to everybody before we leave? I love you. Thank you guys so much. Just, um, I'm super grateful for you all. I um, don't take anything that I have or I do for granted. I don't take you guys for granted. Um, this is some of the best times of my life and I just want to tell you all I'm grateful and thank you. Well, that's going to sound me, whatever I'm going to say right after that is going to sound really stupid. No, so, this is one of the reasons I did it. Cause now we can end with those three words. Yeah. 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 Um, and what I have to say to you guys is 
Percy Kissness, America.